Namaste. Good morning to all of you. Today I will be talking to you about the fundamental unit of Bharatanatyam as you all know that is Adavas. Though the Bharatanatyam has a definite trace through the centuries and still strictly adheres to the ancient manuscripts on the subject, it was four brothers from Tanjore, more popularly referred to as the Tanjore Quartet, who in the 17th century codified and formally framed the Adavus, that is the dance sequences that combine both hand and feet movements and are used for practice and as the building blocks for Nritta sequences and Margam which is the repertory presented by a dancer in complete traditional performances that is strictly followed to date. These were based on the earliest traditions which though passed on through the oral tradition and always retaining the original grammar were never formally codified. While their structure of the repertory is com considered perfect, the articulation of the basic essence and philosophy which is clearly seen in all the elements and sequences both at macro and micro level are so apt and deep with meaning that they remain relevant, revered and highly acclaimed to this day. Thus Bharatanatyam is still considered to possess a rigorously specific structural representation. Now this is very important. The basic units of Bharatanatyam are the Adavus which is essentially a combination or Sarkai meaning to come together in the Tamil language of both steps, feet and torso movement and gestures which is Hastamudra in dance. These are the short universal basic arrangements that are taught to any dancer in the beginning of their training. Adavus come in the category of Nritta and have the same combinations as Karanas. They however are not similar in nature. While the latter is primarily sequences, the former has more practical usage of being the primary component in all Nritta sequences within most compositions and also serves as practice exercises. Most probably though the Adavus might have originated from the Nritta Karana, Adavus are studied combinations involving sthanas. What are sthanas? They are the definite postures of the body that are developed with clear notions of line and space. Then charis which are the movement of the leg and feet. And finally the nritta hastas. They are the mudras, the decorative hand gestures. And Adavu uses every part of the body and relieves physical and mental tensions as in yoga. You all know that. They are extremely beneficial for training and practicing dance and form the spine of all compositions. There are about 15 groups of Adavus. Each group has its own rhythmic syllabus which are rendered while practicing the sequences. Most Adavus are taught and practiced in the Aditalam which has 8 counts or at times the Rupakatalam which has 6 counts. However, in a composition, combinations of Adavus can be set in any one of the specified Talas. With a few exceptions, most of the Adavus are executed in the Aremandi stance which is the late motif of Bharatanatyam. While practicing Adavus, a symmetrical pattern is achieved by executing the sequence first beginning with the right foot and then repeating the entire sequence beginning with the left foot and mirroring most of the movements. 
The entire workout is practiced in slow, medium and fast tempos. The traditional yet contemporary structure of an adavu when executed well with angashuddhi that is purity of line with a heightened essence of grace and beauty has its own capturing beauty which results in aesthetic brilliance. Movement in Bharatanatyam Movement in Bharatanatyam is conceived in constant relation to the ceaseless pull of gravity. It is thus more grounded and conveys the habitual and intrinsic reactions of the body more truthfully than western dances that emphasis an apparently free body in space by incorporating a plethora of gliding movements and terrific leaps in the air. In such a specific art as this, movement is not restricted to the major limbs. Minor movements such as those of the neck, mouth, fingers, eyes and even eyebrows contribute quite strongly to the meaning of the sequence and can drastically alter the emphasis. The expression, direction of head and intensity of the glance are all practiced and specified for every movement. Bharatanatyam possesses an extraordinary vocabulary of movement in place and in space. Movement originates at a single point and relates to a single or multiple axis. This may be horizontal, vertical, diagonal or circular. It conceives of movement in space along the three planes. Axis and direction is integral to the dance form as is the multi-dimensional mandala that is constantly suggested by the dancing body. The various axis that is the sutras that are considered in every posture are described in the Shilpa Shastra include as many as five vertical and three horizontal imaginary lines. The primary Brahma Sutra is the imaginary vertical line passing through the center of the image formed by the body and represents the direction of the pull of the gravity. Thus, the dance is constantly perceived as a series of lines and geometrical patterns that are deeply meditated on and represent specific aspects of bodily response to the basic elements of ground, ether and sky, gravity, space and the limits of perception. Aesthetics of Ras of dance, Rasa theory. All movements are most elegant when performed with intense Angashutta, purity of line and movement, cleanly accomplished with grace and beauty. Anga literally means body while Shuddha translates as purity. In Bharatanatyam, the body is disciplined along with the mind and the soul resulting in a oneness which is the very essence of classical dance. The dance simply uses the body as an instrument wherein the mind which has the greatest facility for creativity. Thus, the art of movement permits complete harmony of the body and mind and acts as an aid to create rasa. Rasa is the aesthetic value or expressional essence of an art form. It is perceived as the enjoyment of aesthetic bliss derived by witnessing a performance and is communicated by the artist to the audience through the art. This rasa theory as conceived by the Hindu aestheticians involves two aspects. 
firstly the evoke state of the observer that is rasavastha in which transcendental bliss may be experienced the second consideration is the sentiment or moods evoked in permanent or transitory states while the latter is provided by the content of the art and the expertise of the artist the former is the ultimate objective of the theory the techniques of all the indian arts are directly conditioned by these principles this is evident through the elaborate rules and systems that govern each of the arts which have been developed to evoke specific rasas the rules of proportion in architecture the detailed formations of various talas use of shruti that is stone and swara which is notes in precise ragas that create particular moods and are sung at specific times for different purposes and the detailed movements of limbs postures gestures and combinations in dance provide ample evidence to collaborate this conception in dance rasa is primarily conveyed through abhinaya these are visual representations and may be broadly divided as one angika this refers to the physical expression of the body through the movement of the limbs second vachika this is the oral facet and is delivered through the music third aharya added visual representations including ornaments costumes stage settings etc contribute to this aspect fourth satvika this is the synthesis of internal emotions and feelings through outward expressions all the other aspects in some essence contribute to this factor but ultimately it is the skill of the artist that dictates this crucial contribution to the rasa experience where the hand goes there should go the eyes for where goes the eyes there goes with it the mind where goes the mind there follow follows the sympathetic imagination and where rests the imagination there is the flow of aesthetic enjoyment from abhinay darpanam the grammar of bharatanatyam steps postures and motion has a certain mathematical formality to it which is what makes it possible for the dancer to represent the inherent laws of the universe by implication through well known myths and stories the ability to hint at this insight through dance is a measure of the dancer's greatness the classical dance transcends the physical plane and seeks to communicate universal truths using medium of the body through the language of movement it exhibits a con concrete manifestation of inner state and vision thus though temporal in nature it essences con concretizes the body's sensorial emotions and carves definite forms in limitless space why the basis of classical dance is the art of expressing events and emotions the primeval experience is about carving space that is making patterns and shapes in space using usually with arithmetical rhythm this continuous regulating rhythm in dance indicates a constant awareness of the dimension of time and the implication of its continuum to any space and any activity in the space a dancer creates architecture through a series of levels the first 
is the body itself, the shapes and lines it creates. The second level that we can talk of is dancing with other people is about composition. The way the implied body spaces relate and interpenetrate. Thirdly, that is put into the surrounding space. For the purpose of this study, we will limit the analysis to the first level. Thus, select basic sequences that is Adavus shall be analyzed as these are the most basic universal codes of movement in Bharatanatyam. The basic posture and the process of movement rather than the final outcome would be the primary focus. Articulation of space in Bharatanatyam. Now we look into this area. The spectral experience is dance may be understood through two perspectives, that of the dancer herself and that of the viewer. The viewer's memory of the space formed by the dancer is more of a secondary experience, yet from his distanced position, the space is more easily comprehensible and can be viewed and understood as a whole. However, an analysis from this point would culminate as a more objective analysis. When we begin to understand and experience Bharatanatyam through the angle of the dancer, the experience becomes first hand and attains a more experiential quality. Such study might be of greater interest to this inquiry. An art can never really be wholly understood by anyone else as much as by the creator. Though the perspective of the viewers is definitely taken into consideration, dance is ultimately a personal exploration of the space, the bodily experience and one's emotional attitude. If the dance is not entirely felt by the artist, it cannot communicate as well as a dance that is soaked with the awareness and intensity of an illuminated dancer. It is probable that the evoked rasa state occurs only when the artist realizes and intensely involves herself in the body's interaction with the space rather than choreographing with simply the form, rhythm and composition of the result to the viewer in mind. This disparity can be compared to that between designing architecture and just making buildings. The awareness and practical experience of space makes the difference to a dance, reaches out intangibly to the rasika that is one who enjoys the performance and allows transcendence. Posture analysis. In Bharatanatyam, the basic postures that are strictly followed in themselves articulate all the most important principles and count within the dance form. They are critical and in some essence serve as the threshold to an act of dance, that is an act of space. The standing positions, that is the sthanakas, specifically the dance's light motif, aremandi, posture, and the particular dramatic gait are generally the first clues you receive about the experience of the actual dance. The lowered position of the body embodies perfect symmetry, balance and orthogonality and possesses a nature of solidarity and connection with the ground. It also effuses a sense of intense personal involvement by the artist in every sense as it seems to personify an inner depth of emotion 
and heartfelt involvement with the dance. The energy excluded by the erect body indicates a focused synthesis of the body and mind and a personal involvement that involves one's entire consciousness and tends to pull a viewer's complete focus and energy as well. The dance always begins and ends with this quiet, focused stance that invokes self-contemplation and a meditative state. Thus, good posture is critical to the dance experience. A limb or unfocused stance tends to dilute the experience and even negate it to a large extent as the attention is drawn to the errors. Even minor details such as the hand mudras which are one of the extremities from where the energy excluded by the body is said to flow. If not held accurately and taught, lose their impact. The embodiment of perfect stance, line and balance with grace and strength in dance is referred to as Anga Shuddha and its precision is essential in any spatial experience through dance. Impact of minor movements. Though this analysis will primarily focus on the implications of the positions and movements of the major limbs and torso, minor movements such as the gaze of the dancer, head and neck emphasis and composition and usage of the mudras also contribute to the implied space in dance. The focus of the eye greatly affects the extent and direction of space under the influence of the movement. It also modifies the meaning of gestures in many instances. Head and neck articulations provide accentuated direction and may dictate the pace and intensity of the movement. Hand gestures are the primary channels of the meaning and its geometries envelop and complete the spaces defined and energies excluded. Parameters of analysis. The notation and analysis of dance is primarily a western concept as the Indian tradition in arts and knowledge is oral and experiential and passed from guru that is the teacher to sishya that is pupil in a holistic manner. However, Indian dance has always been taught with religious devotion and advocated with discipline in refinement. It has thus stood the test of time even though it was never really recorded except for a few exceptions such as the Natya Shastra, Abhinaya Darpana and the codification of Adavus by the Tanjore brothers. It is only recently that an attempt to notate and analyze Indian dance for its space syntax and intellectual implications is being attempted. Thus, the principles and methods are original and true there is no accepted formal method of analysis. Western dance notations have been varied and have developed through the years as an exact science. The most advanced and established method is the system developed by Rudolf Laban. Laban's notation, though comprehensive, is however quite abstract and difficult to read. It is very detailed and so time consuming to learn the notation itself. Thus, for the most part in India, a simpler method of graphical abstraction has been used. The body is reduced to a simple line figure which can represent the essential movements. The points of study includes the center, path, direction, boundary, 
area and geometries evoked by the body and its movement. Secondary aspects such as the significance and impact of the mudras, eye and head movement and the balance and purity of line are also discussed as they too contribute to the quality and dimensions of the space defined through the dance. The energies executed by the dancing body and the implied space thus perceived are also commented upon though to a minimal degree as these tend to be more subjective. The sequences chosen are basic ardavus as these are more universal, relatively simple movements and are the building blocks of any dance composition and the illiterate the best of this interrelationship clearly. In these sequences, however, the aspect of nritya or expression is absent. The Abhinaya Darpana explicitly states as quoted below that in nritya which is purely rhythmic sequences such as adavus, the Abhinaya exponent does not exist. Bhava Bhinaya Hina to nritya Mithya Miditaya. However, when used in dance compositions, the artist might interpret nritta with suitable expression. Though there is no definite narrative expressed, the dance does embody most ambiguously the spectral principles involved in dance. These primary sequences are thus analyzed simply on the basis of their morphological position and movement patterns. The psychophysical and emotive aspects of body postures and dance are avoided to a large extent. The three sequences chosen are varied in their approach, usability and significant spectral theories. The first sequence when we take it is Peria Adavu is a continual movement which covers the greatest distance and forms a continual pattern. The second that is Tattai Tam also involves pronounced dynamism but is more a series of studied poses that a singular fluid movement as is the case of the first example. The third sequence is Natta Adavu is a relatively stationary sequence that explores that involves continually shifting axis while the center point is maintained throughout the sequence the limbs are articulated to stretch to the extremities of the body's mandala, thus creating a sense of kinetic rhythm. Though the center of the body is in reality constant. This selection spreads the analysis across a range of principles.